Hey, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It's uh, it's another big game for the Buckeyes. We got Oregon today, and um, yeah, we'll see we'll see if they improve, especially on the defensive end. If you're not a Buckeye fan, I guess you can just ignore the last 15 seconds. But anyway, it is also the uh, it is also se- Saturday, September 11th, and we all clearly know. Um, what September 11th is, especially on this 20th year um, since it took place. And just how, you know, I was just having a discussion with one of my professors earlier this week, um, uh, my epistemology professor, and we were talking about, like, the reactions to tragedy in the relationship with God and how tragedy can either cause you... um, to react in such a way that makes you put up a wall and block everything and everyone, especially your relationship with God. Or tragedy can do the opposite, and it can bring people and unify together. And that point of like desolation brings you to a higher why, and it kind of brings people together. And that's what happened during September 11th. So we're kind of having this discussion, which is a good thing, um, of course. So we were having that discussion of, like what psychologically is taking place in the in the human mind that um, causes one to react one way versus the other and stuff like that. I thought it was very interesting. Um, so that is that. So so make sure you pray for pray for the U.S. Um, and the state of America um, today, especially and the families that are still affected um, from 9/11, um, but as well as for the future of America too. Uh, we need those prayers every single day, as I'm sure many people already are. So yeah, and as far as today's feast day, it is from St. John Gabriel. I'm going to try to get his last name. St. John Gabriel Pierre Bouillard. It's French. Um, Yeah, he was a a French priest who served as a missionary in China, uh, where he ended up becoming a martyr. Hence, then he worked his way um, after being martyred. Now he's a canonized saint. Um, And he was canonized not too long ago. in 1996 by Pope John Paul II. And since he's a martyr, he doesn't necessarily have to have a patron saint after after him. He died for Jesus. Anyway, today's gospel is from Luke chapter 6, verses 43 through 49. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, Amen. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs, from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of the out of the store of goodness in his heart produces good, but an evil person out of a store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I command? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, listens to my words. And acts on them. That one is like a person building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood came, the river burst against that house, but could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who listens and does not act is like a person who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, it collapsed at once and was completely destroyed. These are two phenomenal readings today. I wish we could, like, break them up. Like one on one day and one on the next, but we got both of them. So like a tree known by its fruit, um, you know, what do we produce? That could be a challenge right there. Both of these are great challenges. Um, You know, a good person out of the store of goodness produces good. A good person produces good out of his heart. No matter where you're at, no matter who you're around, family, friends, strangers, whatever. An evil person out of produces evil. Any evil. And so... Which, which is also in our nature. So like some of us are too hard on ourselves. Um, but like it's, there's a thing called concupiscence, which is like our innate desire to do evil. And that's why we got to have faith. Um, and we have to constantly be aware of, of our actions, of our words and our prayer life, our relationship with God, um, whatever else. So we do produce good fruit. That's our goal. Um, but we all want to. We all desire good and to produce good, but it's so hard sometimes. Um, but 
this key, like this, really stood out with that first part of the scripture of, of a tree known by its fruit. And it's, for from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Like, how do you know whether someone's a good person or an evil person? It's typically through our words. And like what we say, words have power. And words can either, you know, do great things and encourage people, or they can either do terrible things and make people feel terrible, you know? That's why we've got to constantly be aware of what we're saying and how we're wording things. Um, like I, I think bluntness is good, but at the same time, sometimes that's not the best approach. Um, other times it is, you know, so how do you discern that? Um, that's the question. That's the key question. Then the next part of the, the, the second half of today's gospel talks about the two foundations in, in which, you know, we've heard a, a similar parable of this before, you know. I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, listens to me, and listens to me and acts on them. All right, so you got to come to Jesus, listen to Jesus, act upon what Jesus tells you to do. And so, um, you know, at that beginning part, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I tell you to command? Which is that kind of hip hypocritical in itself. Um, so that's why, like, I knew for myself personally, I can never. I need to go to seminary because I can never encourage somebody or like maybe if I were to get married and have kids, I can never encourage my son or daughter to test out religious life or maybe you're going to call it, maybe you're called to be a priest or a, a, a sister or whatever. I couldn't do that in good conscience knowing that I didn't test it out for myself. That's why I'm here. Um, so yeah, we got that, but then also we got these foundations, you know, we got a weak foundation that gets trampled over or a strong foundation that can withstand anything. And I think we all know what we want, but do we truly have it? So um, we need to make sure that we have a strong foundation, which is the foundation of Christ. You know, there's a reason the church was built on the rock of Peter as the cornerstone, the foundation of the church. And look how far the church has grown since the rock of Peter. Because if the Catholic church wasn't what it says it is, it would have fallen centuries ago with how much the Catholic Church gets attacked. There's no way, there's no doubt in my mind that the Catholic Church um, with, is, is founded by Peter, the first pope. Um, so, so yeah, so and that's what we need for all of us on a spiritual level, on a human level, and both is that we need that strong foundation of faith centered on Christ. You know, so how are we on that? And are we continuously strengthening that foundation? Because it can become weakened at any point because we're human. So, long gospel today. A lot of things to talk about. The Buckeyes, 9-11, two great gospel um, parables. And so, uh, take it as you wish. Have a great day. God bless. And keep it real. God bless America. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen.